impromptu session, proper, really impromptu session. Um, yeah, I was meant to have a surgery today, so I booked some annual leave to have a few days off to get over it, and it got cancelled. So I've come out to Hornsey North. Um, parked up at the Marrow Car Park. I'm out with um, Jimmy Cod Bites. So if you're not already subscribed, please do head over to his channel and subscribe after this video or come back to this video. Um, great channel, very knowledgeable angler. Please do go check him out if you can. But yeah, Hornsey North. Marrow, I think it's called Marrow Avenue or Marrow Street Car Park. Straight down the steps, you're on the beach. Happy days, nice easy mark. Taking it steady today, woke up with a really bad back. But for me, with my back, I need to get out, I need to be active. If I, if I stay sedentary, it gets worse. So I've come out fishing, just watching the water, because I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stay here for. I'm already out and fishing, because uh, I was kind of late setting up because uh, I need to have some lunch with my medication so I'll roll the credits and I'll talk to you afterwards because there's no set up time lapse Yay! some of you might be saying <laughs> I've no uh, this new mark to me um, this is where I believe everything starts for the EOBC. Um, there's a lot of people trying to get me to fish in the EOBC next year. I just don't feel ready for a match yet, you know what I mean? I just don't feel ready. Oh! Hold on a second, I think that was a big wave because both rod tips went. We're alright. So today, I'm doing very much doing a go big or go home session. Uh, I'm not using small hooks, I'm not using small baits. I've got two rods out, one on a running ledger, which is a new rig to me, completely new, never used it before. Um, I tied a couple because it was one that I got asked to show on the channel. Uh, so I'm going to do a video with the basic running ledger on it. Uh, I may even, wow, I just saw a bass jump out of the water. Jimmy! Oh, well. Just having a chat with Jimmy, sort of setting world to rights, eh? It probably is then! <laughs> Just having a whinge as a fella set up quite a fair distance to the side of him. But he's not casting off to his left, and there's a, there's a fair bit of wind and a fair bit of surf on today. I'll show you at sea state in a minute. I'll stop waffling, I'll show you at sea state in a minute. Oh, that's all right then. Um, I, I don't know what I just said, that's all right. So I, Jimmy, you always forget, and I know you're like me, you're poorly and you've a lot on your mind, but I can't hear bugger all at the side of the sea. You have to be stood with me for me to be able to hear you. Oh, camera's going again. Let me move this battery down, that'll help. Lower centre of gravity a bit. That's why I bought some longer cables. Yeah, yeah. So it winds a bit, winds a bit high. It's blowing camera about. What I might have to actually, I know what I can do. Give me a sec, guys. Let me just uh, play about with this a little bit. Hey, right, so yeah, just saying to Jimmy. On my first cast, I launched a prawn out, and I mean, my rods were way back there. And I was just, I was still setting up. And it were more wet in a line than out else. And that prawn got absolutely destroyed in about 30 seconds flat. But just as I was talking to you, when, what I went to go tell Jimmy about is I was watching, I just saw a breaker blow and then it was like the wind hit it and it took the sea, took the wind, took the water away. And with this, just this bass in the middle of the air just went boom. Um, so hopefully they're out there. I mean, we can't cast that far, the wind's too, too high. I don't know if the forecast is due to, to turn, the, for the wind to turn at all. I think it is forecast to turn ever so slightly, not by much. Uh, but we've got a, where are we, north, back north easterly, no, no north-westerly, sorry. Probably north-north-westerly uh, wind at the moment. Uh, it is forecast to be 
around about 15 to 18 mile an hour, gusting up to 30 mile an hour. Um, it is a bit of a shame I couldn't bring Marcus with me today because the conditions today would have been good practice for him for some winter fishing. Because uh, this is, I mean, this is very, it, it's not cold, it's, but it's just windy. It's windy and there's a fair bit of surf on. So it'd have been good practice for some winter fishing for him. But unfortunately, he's at work and I'm not, so. But yeah, as I was saying, as I, and I was just saying to Jimmy, and I was just saying before I went to go speak to Jimmy, I'm going big or blanking today. There's going to be no middle ground, so there's probably going to be a lot of time lapse and no fish. Because I ain't that lucky. But I've, I've decided today, after having, you know, not but real micros for a while, um, and not specifically targeting anything big, Normally I give up halfway through a session and stop targeting big things. I'm not today. Um, I've, got squ I've got large squid, blueies, blacks and some prawns with me today. Uh, and that's, that's what I'm sticking to. I'm not, I have, <laughs> back of my mind, I've got some two up clip downs in the box. But like I said, I'm trying to stick to big baits for big fish today. Um, I'm only fishing, I think the large tuck out there is a 3.0 with a 2.0 panel. So, you know, I, I am in the, in the realm of small um, rays, which is what I'm hoping for today. There was a, a report or two of rays coming out of here last night. Um, and as you know, I'm trying to hit a ray, so a ray would be lovely. I'd love to hit into a ray today. We're not going to see much action on the rod tips at all today because the wind is just putting big bowls in the line. We're not really seeing much, but that's why I've gone for, for rigs that have a bit of travel to them when there's a bite. Hopefully the sort of underwater movement of the rig will, will compensate a little bit for the, for the wind putting the bows in the line. I'm going to adjust the tripod because I am going to have to move and I'm going to bring my rod tips down out the wind a little bit. Problem is you've got a high wind and sort of high surf. So if I bring my rod tips too far down, I'm as bad burnt as scalded data. So, you know, advice, advice would be, oh, there you go again. <laughs> advice would be nice, he says. I need to put a counterweight on the bottom of the tripod, I think. Anyway, I don't know if I've got a carrier bag that I can put some rocks in. Anywho, I'll put, I'll give up, I'll shut up waffling and I'll put you on the rod tips and we'll have a bit of a chill out for a little while while I have a sit down and relax my back. Jimmy's just pointing. Oh, if you can, see, can you see Jimmy? Can you see him back there? I, uh, I said to Jimmy, I says, look, the, the high tide line is all the way back up the beach and he says, no, 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 no. I fished it, I've never had to move. And he's just sat there, he's just pointed at the sea, it's almost at his feet. So, the problem is, once it comes over this crest, it's going to fill this void in no time. So, I'm going to move you guys on my box back to back where it was. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'll put you on time lapse, I'll set you up back there and I'll see you in a bit.
We're all good. <laughs> oh, I'm covered in sand. You can tell <laughs> when stuff like that happens that you haven't practiced putting your shelter up or you haven't had to put your shelter up very often. Because <laughs> the heavens just opened. Jimmy shouted over and says, there's a storm front coming. I says, yeah, you're not wrong. You could see it coming. And then within minutes, within minutes, it was here. But we're still fishing. We're still out there fishing. I don't actually fully know how this tent, this thing actually works, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it up like twice. Uh, and never in bad conditions, so. Yeah, that's a first. It's blowing a hoolie out there now. Um, I don't think this storm front's gonna stick around too long, but it's, uh, it's really whipping up out there. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, yeah, it's blowing a fair old hoolie. Um, so I've changed the baits. Sorry about the weird noise. I'm trying to brush sand off everything because fighting with the shelter I got absolutely covered in sand so I'll put you on the rod tips now you've had the you've seen the sea um, I've had a one recast so technically I'm actually only on my second cast um, and both baits came back stripped the prawn and the bluey uh, it wasn't just that the bluey had dissolved it was gone uh, so yeah, that was uh, unexpected. But like I said, I mean, bite detection is going to be nigh on impossible while the wind is, is blowing a hoolie and the surf is up. Um, it's not really, it is due to, to calm down. It is forecast to calm down. Uh, although this weather front has come in two hours later than forecast. So who knows? <laughs> can I get the rod tips on the, on the coast in the shot? Yes, I can. Uh, so yeah, threw the shelter up in a bit of a hurry, in the strong winds. I knew, to be fair, it's my own fault, I knew I should have put it up as I arrived. We knew this weather front was coming in, so, you know, only myself to blame, really. But I'm back in the shelter, back in the dry, and still fishing. Like I said, two strip baits. I'm gonna. I've just resent Bluey and Prawn again, just to see what happens. But I don't hold out too much hope for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna. Well, I'm sat in shelter. I'm gonna pull another rig out, I think, and I'm gonna get so. Or I'm gonna get. Well, while I'm sat here, I'm gonna get a Bluey and uh, not a Bluey, a, a squid and black wrap ready, because. The sea looks good for bass and cod. The sea looks really good for bass and cod. So, and bluey and squid is a good all-rounder. So I'm gonna make up two bluey and squids. I'm gonna send one on both rigs. I might take the running ledger off because it came back in. It was, it was a real mess when it came back in. The rig definitely needs a bit of, bit of tweaking. It's, uh, it's, It needs embellishment, so I'll have to do some more research on that. But uh, yeah, no, not not say aside from the aside from the weather front coming in, that was forecast. I can't say it won't forecast. Not a great deal's going on, so I'm going to make up a couple of squid and bluey, uh, squid and black wraps, and I'm going to uh, resend in about five ten minutes. I'm not going to leave these out quite as long. I am a bit worried about recasting that multiplier now that it's wet through. I had backed the mag off uh, five, is it seven, about ten clicks. I'd backed it off, then I'll back it back on uh, all the way, and then crack it back three and see how that casts um see if i do birds nest it or not i do have another rod i do have another reel if it does go horribly wrong um you know i, I, I can switch over to another fixed ball that's not too much of a problem 
But yeah, what I'll do, I'm not going to do another time lapse. I'm going to shut you down, put you inside the tent, keep you nice and dry, and I'll turn you back on later on if something happens or as I'm recasting. And uh, yeah, so this weather front hadn't really stuck around too long, but it did blow a hole, it did really, really pee it down. So I'm glad I brought the shelter. And I brought the shelter because I actually checked the weather forecast and things today, so yeah. Yeah, I was prepared. Get me, being all prepared and chisel. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll speak to you in a bit. Right, <laughs> I've just spent about the last 20 minutes waffling on to the camera and it had screwed up and not want recording audio again. I'm gonna have to get on to GoPro again. I wish there was an alternative. I wish there was a high quality weatherproof alternative that I could afford. I, I, um, I know DJI have just released a new Osmo that's meant to be very good, but I can't afford it. So, recap on what I just spent last half an hour. I'll speed up the last sort of bit of footage, um, uh, but I'll give you a quick re recap and I'll leave the footage in because it's quite pretty, it was up the sea. So I gave Jimmy a bit of a ribbon because we've, we've had to move all the way back up the beach to, to where I said I was going to have to, we were going to have to move. And he sort of says, nah, we don't have to move. I love this beach. You can set your stall out and that's it. You're sorted. You don't have to move. You don't have to leave. Well, as you'll be able to see from the footage and as you'll be able to see from right now, we're all the way at the back of the beach with an hour to go before high tide. I'm hoping we can leave the tent, I can leave the tent up because the only thing that's really pushing all the way up the beach is the odd, odd, odd strong wave. Um, I'd like to leave the tent up because if I show you up there in the distance, if it's, if it's showing up, it, sh it will be, it won't look as, as menacing to you as it does to me. There's um, another weather front due to blow in and it will blow straight at us. So I'm hoping to not have to pack the tent down. It's not the end of the world if I do, I can nip back to the car and get my waterproofs. Um, and put them on. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I switched my baits up like I said I was gonna. I'm now on a squid and black. And uh, Bluey is on the running ledger now. I'm trying to use the bluey up. I'm going to use the bluey up. I shall, I shall use all the bluey up and I shall continue to send it because uh, it's, I mean, it's the best ray bait. It's a good bass bait. Um, so it, I will be using it up. And if you see, saw the rod bounce there, there's a, there's a big clump of weed that kept getting hit by the waves. Yeah, I think my hopes of leaving the tent up have just been dashed. There's a lot of weed on that line now. I'm gonna to have to reel it in just to clean it, I think. I don't know, it keeps giving me a bit of hope that I may not have to uh, take the tent down. But persevere with it as long as I can. It's like I say, I'd rather sit in tent than, would I, than I would rather than, than sit in waterproofs. Although to be fair, actually, usually I'd rather get piss wet through rather than sit in waterproofs. You get just as wet sat in waterproofs from sweat than you do from water in the rain. So, you know, for me, you're as bad burnt as scalded. But yeah, right, yeah. I'm still persevering. I am being pig stubborn today. I'm not, I'm not gonna pack down. I'm not gonna, sorry, I'm not gonna shrink my rigs down. I'm being stubborn and I'm staying on big rigs. 
I am hoping for a bass or a ray or an early cod. Um, they have been getting the cod out up here. Um, not in any great large numbers, but they have been coming out. And I'm being stubborn. I am refusing to drop down to a smaller rig. Where normally by now I would have I would have given up and I would have dropped down to a two-up clip down or even a three-up flapper, although I think I lost all them at Scarborough. Um, so I might actually do a second video on them because a lot of people have asked because I, sh I did the one with the uh, I've done, has it gone live yet? It might not have gone live yet. But I did a, a three-up flapper a three-up flapper using crimp swivels. And I have bit since been asked by a, f a few people to do one without crimp swivels and just crimp swivels and beads. Um, I, the only reason I'm reluctant, really, is why you know why. <laughs> it's 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 exactly the same principle. You just use a bead, a crimp, a bead, a swivel, a bead, and a crimp. Instead of uh, instead of a crimp swivel, I'm going to have to get that weed off that line. Hang on. No. Oh. But I'm trying to have a chilled out session today because, like I say, I've come out. My back's giving me a bit of jip. Um, I've come out because my back's giving me a bit of jip. In truth. God, that's disorientating. When you're looking at the water as it goes back out, I find that so disorientating. Come on, you're going to wash that, that, that other big ball of weed up to me? You're not, are you? Try and get it before a, wee, a big wave hits. Nope, not getting it this time. That's a big one. Oh, that is so disorientating. Although that hasn't really taken as much weight off the line as I had hoped. It really hasn't. You know what, that weather front might miss us, you know. Yeah, I'm going to pack my tent down. Am I? Am I? Am I going to pack it down? Well, I'm not going to pack it down. I'm going to take it down and take it out of the, the water. It does make me chuckle. The amount of people that I see that, that have come down to walk the dogs and they come down onto the beach and they go, oh, isn't there a beach? You thought, you'd think if you lived local, you'd know how to check a tide time, wouldn't you? You'd think. Why is that so creaky? Why are you so creaky? Oh because I've got you trapped on there. Yes. There we go. Put you up out of the way. Hopefully put you back up later and let you dry out a bit before I pack you down. Right, we're going to have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to wind this one in and recast it. There's that much weed on it. It's probably ripping lead out. I might even snap this off here. There's that much weed on it. I mean, at least it's the bladder rack. 
that's not too hard to deal with. Oh, it's hard work though. What it is, is it's all the weed that's... Oh. That's on the tide, that was on the tide line is now on my line. Right, I have to go clean that chunk off. It's getting too heavy. Give it another wind, actually. Still a bit far out. That's a big chunk of weed. There we go. No wonder it was so bloody heavy. Stop pulling line off. <laughs> big chunk of weed's an understatement for that bugger. Ah, you son of a bitch. Oh. Dear me, look at the size of this. Oh. No wonder that were heavy. Don't you go taking my clump of weed back out to sea. Oh God, there's more. I think this is all caught up in somebody else's line. Yeah, there's a big chunk of big, uh, big chunk of braid in it. Sorry, I bet this sounds wonderful for you guys. I literally jinxed myself, didn't I? Because I just said to Jimmy, so I just went over to see him. So it's not, he says, oh, there's not much weed, is there? I says, no, not really. <laughs> right. 
Right, let's see if we can take some line in, because I think I've got some big ass knots as well now. Yeah, there's a big ass wind knot. I think I've got the same on the other line now as well. I think, to be honest, I'm going to be best just cutting this off. Because that... That ain't coming out. Let's give it a go for two minutes. Ah. I don't know whether it's going to snap on the next cast, but I got the knot out. Is that another one? No, it's my leader knot. That's supposed to be there. Right, that's one in. I'll be careful with this because there's my hooks somewhere in here. Oh, I can see me oak. There you are. Keep hold of you, make sure I'm not going to stick myself. Like that. I 
and then I've just got this mess to sort out then. But I'm going to have to bring the other one in as well, I think. Because I have a feeling that the other one's just as buggered at the moment. Yeah, that's the rig undone. Let's clip you up out of the way so that I don't need to worry about you hooking me while I'm sorting out the other one. <sighs> right. So apparently this is where a multiplier should shine. Oh, right, well, <laughs> welcome to my guide on what to do when you're too pissed off about getting snapped off because of the stupid amounts of weed in the sea. So you're reeling and you're going to do something else instead. Number one, sort out your box because it's a pigsty because you're trying to do too many fishing sessions without tidying it up in between. number two that you can do when you peed off that you've, you've lost two rigs because the surf is so big it's putting so much weed on your line that you know Amsterdam would be proud is tidy up your peg yeah so I'm put my tent away well the tide has turned so hopefully that weed, all it was, was the weed that was on the beach getting washed onto the line. Hopefully, now we're on the ebb, it's not as bad. And I am trying some four ounce leads, because I find I can cast better and further with a four ounce lead than I can with a seven ounce lead or a six ounce lead. Um, a lot of the other fellas are packing up um, I mean, it's, it's, it's been dead quiet. As far as I can see, for them, it's been dead quiet. And like I said, this weed is, is horrific. So, Jimmy's just said he's thinking about giving it up as a bad job today. I'm going to try and stick it out a little bit longer. Because, I mean, whilst, yes, there's plenty of colour in the water, um, still I feel the fish usually come on better after dusk and we're not far from dusk so I'm going to stick it out a bit longer I've got a couple of crab baits I've got a couple of, uh, of, of other baits that I was sort of holding off using but it just seems to be my curse I seem to be cursed when I come to a new mark um, to lose gear it just seems to be what happens to me. So, I like to say, I mean, the other thing I might stick around for is I think both rigs that I've lost are only 20 yard in front of me. So I'm hoping as the water goes back out. But the reason they were snapping off is the weed was, was weighing the, the line down into the rocks and it was just abrading on the rocks. So even though I could take the seaweed off, on the last one I did, I was taking the seaweed off it literally just went slack in my hands. Literally just went slack in my hands. You know, what can you do? There's, there's nothing you can do. So, 
I, one of them were my fault. I were, I were cranking on it and cranking on it and, and hoping it were coming in and then it just went snap. Um, but that one I know really isn't far because I saw the shock leader. What's that? Annoyingly, I think I just saw a bass turn in the wave as well, not 20 feet in front of me. I mean, they're known for it. So I've just sent a crab bait. So far, at least my the line that is visible is staying relatively free of weed. The waves are picking up the line quite quite easily, but. I'm hoping that it's relatively free of weed. There is definitely some on there, but it's it doesn't seem as bad as it as it was. But yeah, you get some tremendous sea on here as it as it sort of as the tide sort of works its way in and out over the over the hump that's between these breakers. And that's all it was lifting the weed up onto the line. Once, once that calms back down again, we'll be all right. I am a bit concerned that there's another storm blowing in. So if that comes, you may well find me filming an outro from the car. Uh, I've just tidied up a load of gear. I'm going to nip up to the car. I'm just waiting to see what this rig does for a little bit. I'm going to nip up to the car and get my coat and take the shelter up. It's just less to carry up. If I'm going up, I might as well take something up with me as well. Uh, but I'm not, you know, I'm not down... I'm, I'm not downhearted. I'm not peed off. It is what it is. Thankfully, I'm at my own heads now and I'm at my own rig, so... I've not lost loads of money. I've lost more money in shock leaders. I think shock leaders are around about 50 pence each. And I've lost one, two, three, five, about five or six of them. So, and I can't make them. Well, I, I probably could actually. I could 3D print them. I'm not good at it. Uh, I've finally remembered to bring my beta test of my um, attachment point my light attachment point um, although I am working on something completely different from from anything else uh, I just need to sort of figure out a light source um, for it but I've got a couple of ideas Yeah, Jimmy's, Jimmy's doing what he said he was going to do, he's dropping to one rod. I think that, that's not a bad idea, and I am only fishing one at the moment. Not one out, one in. But the four ounce lead seems to be doing okay. It's not been washed in, even with the tide picking the line up. So it seems to have settled and seems to be holding, so... If that's the case, I'm actually quite happy about that. Apart from, like I said, that downpour, it's been lovely and warm. It's lovely and warm now. I'm just going to go get my coat in case the rains do come. Um, it was forecast to rain again around about 7, 8 o'clock. But initially, I thought I'd be going home around that time. But that was before I knew this beach. I mean, the beach is so deep, so deep, that uh, I think you can probably fish it for quite some time on the ebb. And that is my plan. So initially, I thought, I, I thought I'd be packing up to go home about eight-ish. Uh, but it's looking like I can stay a bit longer. which is nice. And then spent day with kids tomorrow. And then a busy weekend. So Mrs is back to work this weekend. So I'm going to try and get out Friday night with uh, Dan. 
I, I was planning on getting out anyway. Uh, I was thinking about going to Immingham Wall. Um, purely and simply because I was, I'm dropping the eldest off, she's going to a friend's for the weekend in back in Scunthorpe. So I'm driving most of the way there anyway, so, you know, I was toying with the idea of going to the wall. Uh, Dan's either fishing Cleethorpes or... Mablethorpe. Seems as I'm most of the way there anyway. I'm kind of hoping he does Cleethorpes as opposed to Mablethorpe, but we'll see. Feeling pretty confident that I might be able to send my second rod. What I meant to ask Jimmy actually when I went to go see him was, was his bait still getting stripped? I guess I'll find out. Because the rig I've just sent has just got uh, two black lug on, uh, la lashed together in a smaller formation, sort of doubled over and lashed together. Um, And it's the black lug that uh, Adrian really liked from Cossos in Blackpool. Uh, Scarborough, sorry, not Blackpool. Um, and they are really good quality, i got to say. Um, I don't think they're salted, I think they're frozen fresh. They're not gutted, so they're still full of juice. But they, ha they do appear, or they feel, to be devoid of sand. So, I don't know, maybe they're farmed. I don't know if you can farm black lug. I don't, I don't know. But the wind has dropped right back as a consequence, for the most part, the sea has flattened off a little bit. Yeah, that four ounce lead's definitely managing to hold bottom. The waves are grabbing the line, pulling the line, and it's, it's snapping back to where it was every time. So I'm feeling pretty confident about sending this second, uh, sending this second rod out. I think Jimmy is packing up, I think. We'll just have to wait and see. So I've not had a tide lapse for a little while. I think I've talked your ear off two or three times and we've not had a time lapse. So we'll have another one before the sun goes down. I'll talk to you in a bit.
Right, do we still have, ooh. Do we still have sound? Do we still have sound? We do. How are we doing on the batteries? Okay, we're not doing too badly. Right guys, well, night, darkness is a falling. I was quite adamant that I wasn't gonna give up until the sun has set, and I haven't, and I'm not. I'm still fishing. Tell you what, I can probably cast straight out now as well. A uh, little bit of weed on the line, still a bit of an issue, not a major one anymore. I gotta say, my 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 cantered light works an absolute treat. I don't know how well it shows up for you, but the green rod, this one here, is non-cantered and straight. The yellow rod is cantered and it's lighting up the rod for me, an absolute treat. Um, in actual fact, now the wind's gone, I don't know why I've still got the tripod all crooked. Oh, that was in there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like bloody night and day. Wow, that is one hell of a difference. I mean, I knew the, the offset would make a difference sort of shining the main beam of the light up the rod, but wow, what a difference it's made. Let's just show you, see if I can show you what I can see. Turn this off. So, put you right there, so you're looking up the rods. On the right is my beta version, not for release, not for sale, it's just for my testing. There's a lot of change, now I know that angle works, there's a lot of changes I'm gonna to make to this design now. Um, to the point, so that obviously it's not infringing on, on Pac-Man lights. Um, you know, it's, it's no longer going to be a disc, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I've got some big ideas now. Now I've, now I've seen that angle in action. Jesus, I wish I'd tested that a lot sooner. Without the light, with the light. To see how it shows up on camera. I mean, the straight angle works quite well. The benefit behind the light that I've put on the straight angled one is it's, it's old and knackered, so it's, it's a bit twisted anyway. But, I mean, it's lit up. The one on the right, it is a different torch, I'll grant you that. The one on the right... Yeah. Right, I can move ahead with that design now. I move ahead with that design. Yeah. Right, okay. I think I know how, what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think I know what I'm going to do next. It's a slow process because, quite frankly, I've had that design in my box printed for, well, I keep forgetting it's not in my box, um, but I've had that design ready printed for about two months and kept forgetting to bring it out to test. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! Was that, well, I think that was weed. It just wasn't in correlation with the wave. Let's have a feel of that. I tell you what, let's get this weed off the line anyway. I don't want to lose any more rigs tonight. Well, if there was a fish on it, I think I just lost it in that big wave. I don't know if you guys saw it. Oh, it's just gone heavy again. I don't think there's anything on it. It's not squirrely, like there's a fish on. 
No, just some weed, I think. Yeah. That definitely looked like a bite. Definitely, definitely looked like a bite, that did. Let's get this cleaned off and reshot. Oh, sorry, close up of the weed there. Give myself some more light, there's no reason why I shouldn't. Yeah, I'm well chuffed with that angle. So the uh, light mod, as I'm going to call it, development is going to start back up again. But that was a definite bite. That was a definite bite. Let me have a look at this bait. All right then, buddy. I've just had a stonking bite. You did? Yeah. Absolutely stonking, although it could have been a jellyfish. There's a load of jelly on my line. Absolutely cracking. I'll have to review the footage. To well, I don't know. I've always been of the belief it can, something can fish its tits off either side. One or the other or both. And I've always, I mean, when I've spoken to people, they've always said to me that Holderness is more on the ebb than it is on the flood. So, I, hey? No. No, so I'm going to give it a bit longer. I've got a few baits left I want to use up. Hey, yeah, go on. But there was the. It was either a big clump of weed just attaching itself on line, or it were a fish. But there was a god. There was a massive whack on the green rod then. That's, that's what I was waiting for. I thought we'd have sunset earlier than this. So do I. I'm only going to give it another hour. I'm just going to do some more rapid bait changes, I think. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's been absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Can't hear a word he was saying then. That was Jimmy Codbites. He's been fishing with me today. He's, he's packed up. It was for both of us, it was an impromptu set. And Jimmy only came out because I put a message up saying, Does anybody fancy it today? Because I were moping around house, peed off. Because I'd built myself up for this operation, got myself mentally prepared because it's not something I want to have done. It's not a procedure I want to have done. Them's that, no, no, I'm not going to go into it. Um, but I need to. So I'd got myself all mentally prepared for it. About to start taking my pre-op medication. Phone goes, we're having to reschedule your appointment. Again, for a second time. Lead legs aren't unclipped. But yeah, so I'm going to give it a bit longer. I'm nice and tidy back there. I don't think I need to worry about any gear going missing if I leave my stuff back there on the steps. I'm going to give it another hour, at least, and see how we go. And then I've got a hell of a lot of editing to do tomorrow. So I've got one rigging up video. And one two fishing videos and I must get them edited and uploaded tomorrow because I'm not at home Wednesday.
let's see how the green rod because you could say you know so i want to test this so let's see how the green rod looks on the left on the right as opposed to just testing it with a bright yellow rod yeah oh that's on that's off turn this off as well Yeah, the cantered one is definitely, definitely much better. Although, to be fair, actually, the straight one might be better for the multiplier. Hmm. That's thrown a bit of a spanner at it. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, so I'm going to stick it out a bit longer. I'll pop you back on time lapse, which, so there's not a great deal to look at in the dark. How are they showing up on camera? Uh, the yellow one's still showing up better on camera, but to my eyes, the green one is is far, far better. Let me put this light back on. Yeah, you can't really see that much. Let's see, is it not cantered right for this rod now? Let's try shifting it. Oh, I can't shift it over. It's clamped on too tight. Hang on. Try that. Yeah, try that. Move it over a bit. <clears throat> yeah. Hmm, okay. Okay. That's bizarre. I thought the canting would do more than that. Loosen it off then. There's no room for it to travel any further. So, ah, that's it. That should give it a more severe angle to the right. Sure, I've got it on the right side. Oh, I might not have it on the right side. <laughs> I'm sure I do. And then what I'll try again later is I'll try that light on that angle and see if it's the light that's making any difference. I don't have two of the same lights. Right, anyway, yeah, I'm going to pop you on time lapse and speak to you in a bit. Right guys, the weather's coming back in. That is recording, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the weather's coming back in, so I'm calling it last cast. Um, I've currently got a bait out. 
uh, and that, that yeah that's going to be my last bait out I'm going to pack up rather than march up and down the beach I'm going to pack up go get some food and get off home so the rain's starting to come back in and I'm not fancying getting a cold In fact, this last cast may not even last that long if this rain gets much heavier because the tent's packed down. The, uh, yeah, the tent's packed down and I'm not packing it back. I'm not getting it back out again. My bait's all packed down. So I've just got my rods to pack down. And that's it from me. So, yeah, I'm not gonna bore you with any more video because I mean, the blank videos are not that great, are they? Let's face it. You know, it's not what people want to see. People don't come to watch blanks, they come to see fish. I like to think I do things a little bit different with regards to sort of giving you time on the rod tips as opposed to me chatting as opposed to me just chatting to the camera uh, I like to think you know that that is a little bit different something that nobody else seems to do so much um, so hopefully you know if you like that here it comes you know with the, if you like what I do it's got to be done if you like the videos Yes, they're blank. Yes, I've blanked. Hopefully we're not back on for a blank streak, although winter, I've had a good summer. Winter is not my season. I'm yet to crack winter. Um, I'm going to be trying more beach marks this winter as opposed to, as opposed to the wall. Um, but yeah, try and stay on topic, Ross. <laughs> This is, I mean, I say it in a few videos, I don't say it in every video. This is true fishing. This is true fishing. If I get a blank, you see a blank. If I get a lot of fish, you see a lot of fish. It is what it is. But, you know, having, after having moved, I'm checking out that many new marks, you know. I'm not mastering any, I'm just adding to my little black book of marks as many as I possibly can. so that I have a, well, a, a larger collection of marks. There's no two ways of putting it. With hopefully with that comes options that wind's kicking back up again as well. You know, more mark options will hopefully mean more fish in the long run. I don't, I don't like, I said this last year, I don't like being one of those anglers that just goes to the same place time and time again all year. Well, not all year, but all season. Yes, it can mean that you put more fish on the beach. Yes, it can mean that you know more about a mark, a particular mark. But, I don't know, it's just not, it's just not for me. Um, I will be doing more filming from the wall this year. Or at least that's the intention. Um, primarily because of its location and how easy it is to get to and from. And I know Rosa wants to come do some more fishing again. She's looking forward to going out for the whiting when the whiting start to show. So I'm not going to take that away from her. She really enjoys that. But yeah, true nitty gritty fishing. None of this uh, catch report malarkey, the way you just see fish after fish after fish, because that's not real fishing. I'm hoping to get up to Scotland in November. Although, if I'm being totally honest with myself, it's not looking that likely uh, for one reason or another. 
it's not looking that likely. Let's take this opportunity just to try that rod, that light on that with this rod. I mean, I've done it numerous times before, but having just... Is that my head torch? Yes. Having just sort of used my cantered version, and my cantered version is, you don't need to buy two different ones, obviously, you just turn it round. So this is the straight version of the other light. The other light is without question better But I don't think the straight version is, is the best option. I do think having a slight angle on it is, is a better product. Let me just turn this off a second. Yeah, I do think having a slight angle on it is, is better. Um, I mean, we'll see more when I test it on the wall, but I'd say that's gonna be a, at least a couple of weeks away, I think. Although it might be Friday, <laughs> depends on on uh, on whether I get out with Danny or not. Uh, but yeah, true fishing, tight lines, stay safe, like, share, and subscribe. I'm losing my train of thought. It's just all of a sudden dropped really bloody cold. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, I, you know what? I'm gonna call it a night. So until next time, guys, stay safe, tight lines, and I'll see you later. Please do like, share and subscribe. Bye bye for now.